noise pollution. Whether on the street, at home, in the office or in their gardens, a great many people in modern industrial countries are constantly exposed to some kind of noise, whether it be from traffic, construction work or aeroplanes. The major source of noise is traffic. According to an opinion poll carried out by the Federal Environmental Office in 2008, 59% of Germans feel harassed by traffic noise, and that harassment is bad for their health. More than 12% of those exposed to too much noise suffer from problems like stress, increased risk of heart attacks or insomnia. Noise activates the body and puts it on a kind of standby mode, with the result that it cannot rest and that the circulation and immune systems can be severely damaged. Here at the Federal Highway Research Institute in Bergisch Gladbach, these problems are being energetically addressed. In the project Quiet Traffic, headed by the president of the institute, Peter Reichelt, and project manager Ulrike Stöckert, scientists are investigating the sources of the noises generated and developing effective solutions to reduce that traffic noise. One reason for noise generation is the vibration of the tires caused by the roughness of the road surface. Another reason is air escaping from under the tires. The air is first compressed by the rolling tire and then released. The act of release produces a loud noise. One way of reducing road noise directly at the source is by laying porous asphalt on highways and motorways. Asphalt is a mixture of mineral aggregates and bitumen. The composition of porous asphalt is characterized by the high degree of coarse mineral aggregates that result in a high content of interconnected cavities or voids. Once the asphalt comes out of the mixer, it's compressed and rolled. Such porous asphalts have a void content of approximately 22%. Because of the high proportion of voids, part of the air can escape into them, and in so doing, that absorbs some of the driving noise. As a result, less noise is produced. In addition, the porous asphalt has a smooth surface, creating an additional reduction in tire vibration and thus a reduction in noise produced by that vibration. Also the open asphalt bring zur Lärmreduzierung etwa 50 Porous asphalts reduce noise levels by about 5 decibels, but they have a lifespan of only 8 years because the pores become dirty and clog up. So, to improve them, we began a project with the Federal Ministry of Economics and Technology to find ways of making further improvements. To this end, the University of Stuttgart, together with the Federal Highways Research Institute, has developed a special bitumen which achieves a significant reduction in the tendency of the asphalt to clog up. Through the inclusion of a hydrophobic additive of what's called a block copolymer, the walls of the void system in the asphalt become water resistant. There is no standard procedure to gauge the hydrophilic or hydrophobic properties of bitumen used in road construction. That's why we use a method that's often applied in chemical analysis and technology. It involves the goniometer method or contact angle measurement. It involves the goniometer method or contact angle measurement. On the slide with a normal bitumen film applied, you can clearly see how the water droplet spreads out over the bitumen surface. Drop the water onto the new bitumen and the droplet is much higher and covers much less area. So the greater the contact angle, the more hydrophobic, that is water resistant, the surface of the bitumen film is. The water droplets become rounder and roll off more easily. This measurement technique is based on a phenomenon that everybody has witnessed at some point. On car paint that remains unwashed for a considerable period and is thus dirty, a water droplet spreads out much more. Once the car has gone through a car wash, the droplets roll off the surface. Of course, the other properties of the binder cannot be changed for the worse in the process. It still has to hold together the aggregates reliably. 
That's why the bitumen, once the various additives have been included, is also tested in the strength ductilometer for tensile strength. Once they've passed all the tests, the material can be used in the manufacture of asphalt. In the sound insulated acoustic laboratory of the Federal Highway Research Institute, using what's known as a Kunz tube, scientists examine exactly which frequencies are absorbed by the asphalt. The results show that as a result of its void structure, frequencies around 600 Hz are absorbed particularly well. To effectively absorb the frequencies above that, frequencies that produce a large amount of noise, the Müller BBM engineering company from Planegg near Munich has developed additional absorption elements. They're called resonators and are built into the porous asphalt. What you see here are Helmholtz resonators of various sizes. All these voids are in a concrete sheet and within the frequency range of 800 Hz to 1000 Hz achieve noise reduction of an additional 3 to 4 decibels compared to normal porous asphalt so that overall we have a noise reduction level of 8 to 9 decibels. To the human ear that cuts the level of perceived noise almost in half. To enable research into road surfaces under more realistic conditions, the scientists of the Highway Institute also have a vehicle pavement interaction facility at their disposal. It consists of a large rotating drum with a diameter of five and a half meters, the inside of which can be fitted with interchangeable sections corresponding to a diverse range of road surfaces. During the tests, all kinds of tires are used and they can be tested at speeds up to 280 kilometers an hour. Following the laboratory tests, we would now like to test the whole thing under real conditions. So in cooperation with the federal state of Brandenburg, we've set up a test section on the A24 motorway near Neuruppin. That's where we're installing our new porous asphalt. On a small stretch of the 14-kilometer test section, the newly developed resonators are set into an impervious layer of mastic asphalt. They're secured using hot bitumen, which works as a kind of glue and makes the resonators stick firmly to the impervious layer. Because the road paver which will set the asphalt has to roll over the resonators, it's very important that they do not slip. To achieve the desired acoustic effect and to avoid material damage, the resonators have to be laid out on the base according to a carefully designed pattern. That is achieved using specially made templates. The laying pattern is characterized by two aspects. One is that the openings of the resonators are aligned to the direction of travel, that is, in the direction of travel of the tires where the noises are generated that we're trying to absorb. The resonators are laid out in a staggered pattern, not because of anything to do with acoustics, but for construction reasons. If the covering layer spreads unevenly, and every material expands as a result of temperature fluctuations, and the resonator elements expand to a different degree than the asphalt layer on top of it, then small cracks could occur. And to avoid these small cracks occurring, the resonator tiles are offset. Dann entstehen leicht mal Risse und um diese Risse zu vermeiden, sind diese Elemente versetzt angeordnet. The porous asphalt can only be laid once the hot bitumen used to affix the resonator elements has completely solidified. The process requires sophisticated logistics and a high degree of concentration. Interruptions are not possible and precision is key. The heavy articulated lorries with their loads of asphalt at 150 degrees Celsius line up behind the huge road paver. One after another, they tip their loads into the hopper of the transfer machine, which transports the asphalt into the road paver and spreads it out over the road section. The resonators manage to bear the weight of the lorries, but can they withstand the 50-ton paver? The tension mounts. But the resonators bear the load without a problem, and the paver is able to spread the asphalt onto the test section. 
The asphalt is spread out with the help of a 12 meter wide screed built up to the necessary thickness and pre-compacted. Behind the screed, four tandem rollers drive up and down, giving the asphalt the compaction and evenness required. Once the first asphalt layer has cooled, the second can be applied the following day. At eight centimeters, two-layer asphalt is almost twice as thick as one layer and consists of different grain sizes. It creates a varied network of voids and thus improved sound absorption. Once the porous asphalt has cooled, the moment of truth has arrived. The sound emission is measured at different heights using microphones, and at the same time the various speeds of the vehicles passing by are measured, so that the noise level can be matched to the relevant speed. So what will happen? Will the real conditions test confirm the noise reduction results arrived at in the laboratory? For the test, the car drives past the noise measurement section, once over the old stone plastic asphalt and once over the new porous asphalt with the built-in resonators. In the test vehicle, the researchers watch the data recording with growing excitement. Will the results really confirm the research conclusions reached in the test lab? Yes, as we expected. It's really great. You can see a reduction of between 7 and 8 decibels compared to the control surface. The two-layered porous asphalt significantly reduces noise levels. So the research brief has been successfully completed. Some technical solutions still have to be found. For example, development of a road laying machine for the resonators so that larger stretches of highway can be constructed using this technique. If after a few years it turns out that the newly developed asphalt can remain free of dirt particles for a considerably longer time, then one can assume that construction using this new method will be used more often on Germany's motorways, despite higher initial investment costs. After all, Noise reduction is an important way of looking after people's health.